What's going on, everybody? Eric Lindquist at Stochastic here on the Odd Chopper channel, coming to you with another edition of Lenny's Leans. Likes and locks. Hit that like button. My nose itch. Subscribe button. Notification bell goes a long way for me on this video. It goes a long way for you. That way you become a prize whenever great content is going live here at our little neck of the YouTube woods. Ah, oh, yes. It's good to be home, friends. It's good to be home. Although, you probably enjoyed the childhood bedroom and the airport. Yeah, you heard me. We were getting it done no matter what. Getting some bets up there. Not always good. And of course, tonight we get Bogdanovich, the likeish lock. Again, I couldn't even fully lock him. Couldn't even, didn't even have the gumption. If you had told me that they would go to overtime and I would be getting 35 plus of all these dudes and I wouldn't hit 17 and a half for Bogdanovich, I would have thought you were insane. But of course, sometimes you just aren't running very good. And it is what it is. Uh, that was unfortunate. Overall, though, still had a pretty, well, yesterday was kind of a wonky one outside of the video coverage. Had a couple of premium Discord plays that could have turned, ugh. Just disgusting stuff. Kevin Durant goes completely nuclear. We had Luka Doncic on Christmas Day go completely nuclear. Called both of those. Just didn't get the right stat, stat categories. 50 points for Luka. Looking for the triple-double. Kevin Durant, 30-plus uh, Phoenix money line. Of course, he goes for 27 fucking points and 94,000 assists. It's so good to be back, though, huh? Excited to talk a little NBA with everybody here. Wild news throughout the entire night tonight. You can make some money if you're paying attention to that news and trying to react. <laughs> I react to try to hammer the under of 12 and a half points for Duop Breathe, only to have him ruled out five minutes before that game locked. Hopefully you're able to react for DFS purposes, everything else. But that ticket's just going to be voided, so it is what it is. But this is what it is, friends. Bet MGM. Get yourself up to $1,500 in bet credits in addition to two months of Hot Chopper Premium. I'll talk about them a little bit later. We have Hot Chopper Premium. 15 bucks for the week now. You can jump into that premium Discord where it's not just me. It's uh, Eitan Shander. It's Ben Raza. Everybody you know and love here at the Odd Chopper channel. But again, lots of games. 10, I believe, to get to here on Friday. Ah, uh, there's no place like home. I need to shave. Producer Jacob, let's get to the picks. We begin our boarding walk here in Orlando. We're going to Disney World Friends or something like that. That would actually be more fun than a lot of games going on in Orlando in years past. But not this year, friends. They got themselves a squad. Now, what are they up to here in terms of record? It's absurd. 18 and 12. Beautiful stuff. Plus 1.3 in the adjusted NAC category. This is a good basketball team. And this is a Knicks team that uh, I can't get right to save the life of me this year. Thank God I made money on them in 2022. Well, and the 2022-2023 season because they're attached. This year, I can't figure out what to do with the next. I bet against them. It is what it is. I bet for them. They completely take the night off. Like in Utah, once upon a time, I will never forget that lock. will never forgive myself. But not that I'm hard on myself or anything. Let's take a look at this one because I have kind of a, a strange play, if you will. The next side of things, we know Mitchell Robinson. He is out there for the... Uh, entire season that's a brutal brutal loss here for a team that needs size length and all of that but don't forget jericho sims also out and we'll kind of re resurface back to that markel fultz remember when he was close to coming back for orlando it's not happening anytime soon and they're getting better minutes now of late out of anthony black he's been much much better in a couple of these spots and hey you could just rip him off the court if he's not playing well like against that philly team last time out where they got steamrolled that was a weird game on a back-to-back -back. so i try not to go and uh you know, these back-to-backs that they have teams like Philadelphia that's figuring it out without Embiid right now. Yeah, Embiid already ruled out for Friday, too. That'll be that'll be an exciting one here as we come down later. But I am looking at Isaiah Hardenstein here for the Knicks side of things. He's one of the lowest usage players you could ever imagine playing, but minutes are opportunity, friends, and he gets all of these putbacks. This is a true center rotation that you get on the Orlando side. Goga Patate, he's been so good defensively. Second in defensive rating amongst all centers. Still a distant second compared to Rudy Gobert, who's been outrageous. But still, he's played himself into this rotation for the foreseeable future. Mo Wagner played really good minutes too. So as much as we want to see Wendell Carter unleashed or something, I, I don't. 21, 22 minutes, that might end up being the cap for him here under these current circumstances unless they try to move a Goga or move a Wagner or something. I doubt they're going to move Wagner because Franz would be pissed. And Franz, he is the priority. You make that man happy. This might be like one of those Morris twins deals, but one brother is substantially better than the other here. That is for sure. Sorry, Mo. Go Michigan. Anyway, Isaiah Hardenstein, this is the guy that I'm kind of start circling. He is out there for defensive purposes himself, plus 2.8 in the estimated plus minus category. As I said before, 
11.2% usage is sub 10th percentile in the entire NBA, but he goes from averaging 22 minutes a game to playing right around 30, 33 minutes a game here. Played 37 against OK Oklahoma City there in that competitive spot. So he averages 6.2 points per game. And yes, more of those minutes are along some of the starters, but you're playing 37 minutes in some of these spots. And now you're playing a team with all true centers, 100% true centers. They're going to need him on the floor as much as humanly possible. So barring foul trouble, this is a really low number at FanDuel at minus 111 currently. Over seven and a half points. Yeah. Isaiah Hornstein, over seven and a half is how we're kicking off the card. What a wild time to be alive. We go to the next game. Brooklyn at Washington. And normally when there's not a whole lot of injury news waiting in the wings, well, you, we don't end up firing stuff up here. But there is some injury news waiting in the wings to some extent. Nick Claxton, he is probable now, so that isn't really waiting in the wings. Dorian Finney-Smith, now probable, so that's not really waiting. But I guess the one thing I do want to touch on here was the opportunity to jam unders in these weird spots, like Mikhail Bridges, who's on this Iron Man streak. Shout out to DKDFS. He's a great follow over on the Twitters, over on the YouTubes. You should be doing such things. Happy to give him a shout out here uh, on the on the streets because he's just a good dude who's really good at the betting of basketball. But uh, he was really early to that one and wasn't something that was on my radar until he tweeted it out. Hopefully you were able to take advantage after that one quarter of appearance and then if they just decided they weren't going to play the Brooklyn starters the rest of the way. Cam Thomas, have a seat. Mikhail Bridges, have a seat. He played one quarter of basketball, didn't reappear. You got to be able to take advantage of spots like that. I wish I could have taken advantage of it even more than I did. But it is what it is. If you made some money off of it, awesome. If you didn't, such is life. But I think we go back to normal rotations and normal things here for Brooklyn, barring catastrophe. Again, that was a back-to-back -back situation. This is not. Washington. Why, why is this six? Why why is it only six here from the Brooklyn side of things? I'm a little bit surprised by this number. And again, I try not to get in the habit of saying I know better than the books when there's no injury news, when there's nothing that can break your way. And they get to just sit out there and have, you know, some back and forth. Let people dictate the marketplace here. But this should be seven, seven and a half at least. Should be probably eight. I have it closer to seven and a half. Point and a half here in this spot. I think it's worth a sprinkle. This is like your, your standard half unit play. Again, I, I don't understand this one whatsoever. When you look at the adjusted net ratings and when you look at the adjusted offensive ratings between both of these teams, Brooklyn, as they've gotten healthier, and yeah, they're still waiting for Ben Simmons, who, again, we're not necessarily talking about offense here. But Brooklyn's 15 and 16th, ninth currently in the Eastern Conference. Negative 0.5 in the adjusted net rating, but that's 20th, whereas Washington is down in the doldrums at negative 7.8, 27th percent, well, not 27th percent all, 27th out of 30 NBA teams. That is fourth worst. Fourth worst is what we're talking about. And defensively, they couldn't guard you or me or anyone else. Even the guy who, like, chucks it up against the backboard in that shooting gif. Like he's shot putting. You know the one. Headband. Yeah. Brooklyn minus six. Half unit. That's it. All right. Let's get through these two games kind of quick here. The back-to-backs, and we're waiting some, some lines, and it is what it is. But Sacramento Atlanta here, perfectly efficient. No notes. Don't advise betting. Really, really don't. DeAndre Hunter's out. I didn't even know who Seth Lundy was until this very, very moment. He's apparently played four games. Rolled his ankle. Played, what, 30 minutes total this entire season. I don't think he matters. But I'm Lindy. He's Lundy. That's kind of cool. How's everybody doing? We okay? NBA's been tough this year. It's been tougher than most years. But you know what? You're smart. You're beautiful. And gosh darn it, people like you. And they only like me if I win the bet. So let's not talk about a bet I'm not going to make. Sacramento and Atlanta. Oh, 50-50 Atlanta money line. We're not in the business of flipping coins. We, we we shouldn't flip coins. Next game, let's do this again. Yeah. Why did Boston go to overtime with Detroit today? I, I, if you're listening to me on podcast right now, my apologies, but like... Gary Trent started for Toronto. That's the only note I had. 
from this game, this entire game. That's the only thing that I cared about. We're waiting for lines. Gary Trent started over Dennis Schroeder last game, and then Dennis Schroeder came in and just annihilated. If you follow me on Twitter, you know that we jammed some over seven, over seven and a half assists for Mr. Scotty Barnes because he was playing point guard. He got eight. It was good. We're not going to bet this. Stop it. Boston's going to have to rest some people on a back-to-back -back if this is going to be interesting whatsoever to me, but it's not going to happen more than likely. They did play an overtime game. Maybe Kristaps Porzingis sits. But Jalen Brown sat. Didn't play Thursday with his back. Does he play here? I don't know. There's a lot to figure out here. But my notes say Gary Trent started over Dennis Schroeder last game. Period. That's That's all I have. And yet I've made this segment like three minutes long. I'm special like that. See why some people hate me. Toronto money line, just a lean, continuing on. Oh, actually first, Odd Shopper. Friends, $14.95 for a weekly subscription now to Odd Shopper is just redonkulous. And here's why. I like to think that I give you great information on a day-to-day -day basis. I like to think that I give you some levity in your work week from time to time that occasionally I can make fun of myself, be self-deprecating. But at the end of it, the whole crux is that I'm good at math. I'm good at sports betting sometimes. Well, most of the time. My, I have 1099s to prove such things. It just is what it is. Guys, tax season is coming soon. We got to make some money. If you want to be making some money here with me, OS Premium Tools. Yeah, we're free rolling here at the end of the season. Freestyling. Freestyling. That's Flight of the Concords. Nobody cares. But $14.95 for the weekly package, friends. All the OS Premium Tools, the Discord, Insider Access, myself, Ben Raza, Aton Shander, everybody you know and love here on the Odd Chopper channel is in one easy-to-find place, updating you with our betting cards, talking through bets, talking through scenarios. Really fun stuff. And now it's only $14.95 for the weekly. It is absurd how good the tools are too here with it. We're talking the positive EV tool, the parlay builder. And yeah, if you're playing prize picks, if you're playing underdog, we have the fantasy optimizer. It is so beautiful. It is so nice. I'm telling you, friends, jump into that premium discord. Come hang out. $14.95 for the week. And then use promo code Lindy when you do for an extra 20% off. Look at that. So get the expert picks, the discord, and then of course the holy grill. Oh, our favor. The premium tools, friends. The positive EV tool. It is absurd. Get ready to jam some unders on some good stuff. All in one easy to find package. All right. Back to the picks we go. By the way, you can sign up for Odd Shopper down below. That's a good place to do that. I should have thrown that in there, but God forbid I do my job. Milwaukee minus five going up against Cleveland. Producer Jacob does his job because look at this. He's at it. He just picks. I'm always curious what his thought process is. And he's like, hmm. Today, I'm going to go with finals odds on certain spots. Or I'm going to troll certain teams because they're 10,000 to one like Detroit. Put a, put a dollar and get a car. Put a dollar and get a car. What, Producer Jacob? You want to say something? It depends on how many games are going on the day we record. It depends on yep. how many days are going on the day that we record. Look at that. The voice of God coming in and letting you know what the heck is up. Now, I don't know what's up here with this spot because Donovan Mitchell is still dealing with an illness. So we can kind of assume what that illness might be. He hasn't played since the 18th. He is a real rumbly in his tumbly. It is now, what, December 29th when we're going to be looking at betting on this sucker? And guy was playing 40, 41, 45 minutes, and then all of a sudden gets sick, missed the last four games. Will this be five in a row or will this not? I don't know, but we'll talk about where I want to go in that direction here in a second. As for the Milwaukee side of things, thank God we got a nice, easy lock across the board there. Sometimes news really breaks your way. And Brooklyn on a back-to-back -back said that was a pretty straightforward lock. Minus three and a half, took the money line, did both. And then you got the litany of news. You got one quarter of Mikel Bridges and Cam Thomas, and we jammed that Milwaukee spot. Went from minus 135 recording the night before, closed around minus 300. That seems like value. So I did my job well one time. Don't ask me about the cards that I posted on Twitter that day. Yeah. It's tough sometimes in these streets. But Milwaukee, that was a sharp one. That was a sharp one. Don't know what we're supposed to do here other than Donovan Mitchell, 30 plus points. Now, this prop probably opens north of that considering everybody else. Evan Mobley, out. Darius Garland, out. Sam Merrill with this wrist injury, and after he goes, what, 5 for 10, 8 for 14 from 3 alone in back-to-back -back games playing minutes, 
He's questionable, probably going to be out, but we shall see. Craig Porter Jr. has done a really nice job. Obviously, he played for our money the other night. Plus four and a half we got in there. Moved to plus three. Then Luka gets to announce his playing, and then it's going to eight and a half. And guess what? Cleveland won outright anyway, because why wouldn't they? Welcome to the NBA again. For once, I was on the wrong side of closing line value. And what happens? I win with the ticket. I win with it. That was absurd. But yeah, Donovan Mitchell, 30 plus points. He should be able to just chuck ad nauseum. Milwaukee, we know that they bring pace, all that pace to the table. 102.4 possessions per 48 minutes. And then defensively, they're down outside of the top half of the NBA, which is wild considering Middleton, Giannis, and then a lot of guys who are supposed to be 3 and D guys. They're just forgetting the D. I'm never saying that again. Donovan Mitchell, 30 plus points. Spider! For what it's worth, that was just a lean, so I want to remind you of that. It's something, if he plays, 30-plus points for Donovan Mitchell. That's cool. But let's talk 76ers in Houston. 76ers coming off of a really nice win. Again, they were able to... I mean, you can't blame them. You play on the days you're supposed to play, and you play who's in front of you, and they played Orlando, who was on a back-to-back, -back, and Philadelphia promptly came in, spanked that ass. So it is what it is, right? Cool. Anyway, they're going to be playing Philadelphia... Or, sorry. Philly's going to be playing Houston here in this spot. And Houston, one of the most improved teams. Ime Udoka, somebody who needs to be considered for Coach of the Year. And yeah, Houston's only 15 and 14. But remember, last year, they couldn't beat you or me or our Y team. So it is what it is. You just need to keep things all in consideration. You know who Ime Udoka would have been a really good coach for? Boston Celtics, I think, would be really good. The Ime Udoka. Firing a guy for liking women. There you go. Well, not liking. He cheated on his wife. Probably shouldn't do that. Seems bad. Yeah. Let's talk basketball. We're talking a little bit of a pace here, friends. 217 and a half. I feel pretty good about the under here in this spot. Now, 217 and a half is not a big total whatsoever, but... When you start taking pace considerations here, friends, start taking pace considerations here. 97.9 possessions per 48 minutes is low for Houston. And then you go to the other side, Philadelphia. They are really struggling here offensively. Well, relative to expectations here and just hammering down on defense here in the absence of Joel Embiid. And Joel Embiid, one of the most important players in the NBA, no doubt about it. But Tyrese Maxey and Tobias Harris were doing a decent enough job of keeping this team hobbing along. Kelly Oubre didn't even shoot the ball remotely well. What, one for seven from the field last time out against Orlando? And still a 112-92 schlacking there for them, so it is what it is. But Houston defensively is so improved. We'll point out, though, we'll point out, they're going to have to do something here with this starting rotation. Is Jabari Smith out for this one? I think that makes it even more likely that we're looking here at an under. And you've got a questionable Tari Eason, so, like, this could be welcome to the starting lineup. Amen, Thompson. Amen. Jeff Green, he's old. My analysis is really good today. Under 217 and a half, I like it, continuing on our merry way. To the play of the day. We're talking about back-to-backs. We're talking about these teams that are resting, guys, and what's going on. But one thing that's really wild that I didn't go into too much depth because I was trying to research it and figure out exactly how or what happened. But Eric Gordon, Aaron, I almost said Eric Gordon, Aaron Gordon. We're talking the former Arizona Wildcat, former Orlando Magic guy. Now an absolute stud here for Denver. Two-way player de defensively. Very, very important to Denver. He gets attacked by a dog. 21 stitches. Lacerations on his face. And I went on a deep dive. Tried to figure out exactly what's going on here. But I think he's going to be out here for a, more than a second. It's a pretty freaky situation. So you have Peyton Watson, who jumps into the starting lineup here on Thursday. Knocks down threes from time to time. They're up 31 currently on Memphis. So this isn't one of those spots where it's like, yeah, I think we're looking at, uh, oh my God, Jokic is going to get a triple-double today. It's 22, 13, and nine. There's five minutes left here in the third. I mean, you know what's looking good though? How about those unders, producer Jacob? Second half unders. That face was really weird. 
Let's talk this lock, though, shall we? Oklahoma City. I feel really good about this spot for them. And obviously, we're probably going to see a second half where a lot of these dudes get to rest. Justin Holiday out there knocking down threes. Currently, Julian Strother, Payne Watson maybe ends up closing this game, even though he started this game as well. Mainly because I don't know how they look at him and value him. But friends, 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 friends. Another back-to-back -back here at altitude. And obviously, Denver's used to it because all of their back-to-backs are at altitude. Look at me. I'm smart like that. But Oklahoma City is freaking good, guys. This is not a team to go out of your way to pick on. They are currently third in my rankings, third in adjusted net rating on dunks and threes, 20 and nine. And the complexion of this team completely changes when you add a seven, what, three unicorn to the situation. And yeah, every team seems to have one of those. Victor Wembanyama, even though he's going to be playing reduced minutes, not going to be playing basketball here on Friday. And we'll get to that point here as well. You got Kristaps Porzingis out there knocking down threes, being the hero that Gotham deserves out there in overtime for the uh, Boston Celtics. But I mean, God, is Chet Holmgren good? He's so damn good. And obviously I'm a little bit biased, Minnetonka, Minnesota beautiful stuff goes to Gonzaga really really lovely but defensively he's a 98th percentile defender in his first season as a 21 year old true shooting a 64.5 percent 88th percentile drastically better than that of Victor Wembanyama. now the ma major favorite to win rookie of the year at this point in time 8.5 percent block rate doing absurd things oh yeah and that sga character is pretty good too plus 10.1 epm only trailing Jokic in the entire nba 7.9 estimated win share is the highest in the nba sga is out of control he is just so damn good they need to ship off josh getty though god is he bad not just because he's an idiot but 50.5 two percent true shooting negative 2.9 epm you replace him with just about anybody can we get Cassin wallace out there for some minutes even this message fellow could be okay from time to time remember when aaron wiggins was the thing he doesn't really play that much jalen williams is really good luke dort's really good isaiah joe knocks down shots can be really good 63.3 percent true shooting percentage basically i'm listing off all the reasons i like oklahoma city it's not that i don't like denver because denver friends Again, they're outrageously good themselves. But they trail Oklahoma City in adjusted net rating now. They trail Oklahoma City in defensive rating right now. They're playing on the back-to-back. -back. I get that home court is generally worth three, but I think plus three and a half is too many to be getting here, and I want to be locking it in now. There's a potential that Denver has to rest a couple of guys here or there. Does Jamal Murray play here on the back-to-back? -back? That's always a question that we have there. 33 34 minutes he's been playing here lately the minutes have trended up he did play on the last back-to-back -back they had against brooklyn and charlotte so nice of them to go and blow this memphis team out of the water and then memphis is going to be on a back-to-back -back themselves that's kind of wild but and this is just a spot where i think you just stay the hell away from anything that has to do with denver and you just jam oklahoma city plus three and a half <laughs> 14 and a half and 15. Charlotte just trailing up. Open 11 against the Clippers. Close at 13 and a half. Open at 13 against Lakers. Close at 13 and a half here. 14 and a half going up against Phoenix. And uh, yeah, I was kind of going a little bit spastic here earlier, mainly because Cody Martin, he's been playing more and more minutes here. Well, he's only played two games, but 25 minutes against the Clippers there two nights ago. Now he's playing this evening. We'll see how many minutes he gets up to, but they just decide to keep starting Bryce McGowan's and you ended up getting Brandon Miller playing tonight. Does he end up sitting considering that ankle? Do you want a guy who is questionable coming in with an ankle to play on a back-to-back? -back? I do not know, Sam. I am. I do not like green eggs at hand. But you know what? We're not going to talk about a lot about Charlotte here because, I mean, I'm not going to package the Phoenix money line with this play like I did last time. That was not even the issue. The issue was Kevin Durant decided to be Steve Nash for a night. I don't know why. I don't know how. But remember when I said, you're going to get Luka just eviscerate them on Christmas. And then I was smart enough to predict. I think Kevin Durant just goes absolutely ballistic there in Houston because it was actually a really, really good spot. Plays 41 minutes, 27, 16, and 10, triple double. Not good when you bet him for 30 plus points in the Phoenix money line to get it up or oh, well over plus 200. God, am I running bad. You can't tell me that wasn't a phenomenal bet in hindsight. You give me 41 minutes of Durant there. 
he obviously wanted to go out and put out a statement and say, you know what? I'm still pretty good at this. Coming off of that Christmas embarrassment. Thought he would do it in the point category. That's the one thing, you know, as a fantasy guy, where it's nice to be able to get rewarded on stuff like that no matter what, because you just get the entire portfolio. And you can do that with plus points, rebounds, plus assists. But again, it's always relative to what the odds are, because, I mean, you make his line 60 and a half, you would jam the under a million times out of a million. You make it 35 and a half, you jam the over a million times out of a million. There's just context to everything, and you have management of your bankroll based on what you're seeing and you know other than the mccall bridges spot where it was just a virtual certainty that he was not going to be seeing a full allotment of minutes and you can jam alternate lines and do things like that these are the kind of spots that just get really frustrating when you're on the wrong side of a play here a play there a bucket here a bucket there and obviously 16 assists is absurd from kevin durant tied a career high for him i was surprised to see that he had actually done that before because i didn't think there was any damn way but went back and watched it you're going to see an increase of usage here. He's had 14, 11, and 16 shot attempts. He played 34, 43, and 41 minutes in those. I know he's playing alongside Devin Booker, and it sounds like this evening where it could be getting Bradley Beal back, which is kind of fun to think about. He is questionable for this one, which uh, was a massive change here in complexion, but I do think this is a spot where I still want to try to push the limits on Kevin Durant to 30+. plus, Because Kevin Durant's the alpha of this basketball team no matter what. He just is. I love you, Devin Booker, but there's a reason they went out and got Kevin Durant. Actually, I don't love Devin Booker. Why did I say that? That was a bold-faced lie. He whines a lot. Stop whining. Dated. Jenner chick. That was pretty. That was fun. That must have been fun for him. Kevin Durant, 30-plus points. If he decides not to troll me again, that'd be cool. We should have got a troll emoji. That would have been fun, producer Jacob. Failure. This organization will not tolerate failure. All righty. Bet MGM, friends. I don't know how many ways to tell you. You sign up at the link below. Because you want exposure to all the sports books. It's called Odd Shopper for a reason. And plus, do you want to get two months of just complete access to all the Odd Shopper tools and Discord access? Everything I talked about earlier? Well... How about $10 or more? Going to the link below, depositing $10 or more at BetMGM, claiming up to $1,500 in bonus bets, and then getting that $100 value the two months of Odd Trapper Tools plus Discord access completely free. Sound good? Cool. Then just do it. It's Christmas season. Find $10 under the couch. Couch cushions. Deposit 50. Again, up to $1,500 in bonus bets. Take advantage of these massive offers. I would be using this to the fullest extent I could if I had not already signed up for BetMGM. But alas, earwax. That's from Harry Potter. For those who don't know. Birdie bots have every flavor of jelly beans. This show's gotten off the rails. Let's continue on, friends. But yeah, it's only if you're 21 and over. If you have a gambling problem, please call 1-800-GAMBLER. Back to the picks we go. Uh, What? All right, so San Antonio is playing basketball as we speak here, going up against this uh, it's really terrible, horrible, no good, very bad basketball team that they're facing. They're up by 19 against Portland. It's pretty wild when you think about it. Pretty bad, pretty bad. Scoot Henderson has a million points. Keeps getting in foul trouble because he's dumb, dumb. But Wemba Yama has 15, 3, and 2. That seems pretty good, huh? It's pretty good. Pretty good at the basketballs. Pretty good at the basketballs. Anyway, they're playing again here. So they're they're playing Wembenyama on Thursday. They're not going to play him on Friday. Duop Reith got ruled out today. Does he play tomorrow? I, I don't know. It's Duop Reith. Does that matter? Currently, they have something named an Ibo Baji that's on the floor. I've never heard of him until today. That's what I do for a living, so. What what do you want me to talk about? Sometimes I lay awake at night and I think about, like, what the meaning of all of this is. Like, we're just talking on YouTube. And this will live longer than I do. Probably just be here on the interwebs forever. Some alien will come down, take a look at it, and be like, Oh, this guy's an idiot. Too bad he's still not here. 
been dead for a thousand years. And nobody remembers his name except for me. Me, Alien 94642. And he'll watch the video again. And he'll laugh. He'll cry a little. Some sentimental like that. Bring up feelings of nostalgia. Days of his home planet. Back when they were betting on their, what would their sport be? I got nothing for you. Portland Moneyline friends, lean next game. And the last game of the night, smash that like button here if you've enjoyed it as much as I have. I think you probably have some, you probably have not. I don't care. I love 99.9% .9 of you. Memphis, Clippers, going to be a fun one here. I do expect John Morant to play basketball, considering he ended up resting here in this spot. Now, they are getting their butts kicked. That is the Memphis Grizzlies getting their butts kicked by Denver right now, down 23, entering the fourth quarter. I will be on high alert here, mainly because I think this bodes really, really well to having everybody suit up here on the Memphis side of things in a, well, it's not a more winnable game than what it was in Denver, but that's a wild thing to say out loud. Clippers, winners of nine in a row now? Seems good. They're figuring this James Harden thing out. If you go over to NBA.com and you start playing with some of those rotations, seeing what units are working well together, James Harden and his rapport here with Kawhi Leonard and Paul George, they're one of the best three-man tandems in the entire NBA, which shouldn't be surprising. If you knew that that three, that, that combination of players was going to show up together at some point, you would have said, yeah, that makes sense that they would be a top five trio in all of the NBA. But it's true, and it's getting better, and it's only going to get better from here, I believe. So there you go. Again, you make that swing every damn time. Said it from day one. This could go down in flames and it doesn't matter you got to try to take advantage because Kawhi and paul george they ain't cheap you might as well go unload the clip here they're still probably a piece away maybe a couple in terms of just get some wing shooting uh, you can't have enough of it and i know that Kawhi and paul george that's kind of what they are but like get a jay crowder from milwaukee if you can get somebody somewhere you're not getting franz wagner now oh no 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 you probably were never getting franz wagner let's be serious Sadiq Bay. Sadiq Bay would look pretty good with the Clippers. Producer Jacob doesn't like Sadiq Bay. Looks like he just had a sour grape when I said that. It is what it is. But you're looking for one more guy like that who can play a little defense and knock down a three or two when they're wide open. That's well, you don't need anybody to play with the ball in their hands. We'll get it, we'll put it that way because you got Russell Westbrook off the bench. You got James Harden all the time, and Kawhi and Paul George, they're kind of good too. So I'm going to do something interesting here because, well, it's my show and I can do whatever I want. I don't know if you could tell. I mean, we've, we've gone some places tonight. But with this Clippers spot, I do think that they are just dynamic enough where Memphis on a back-to-back. -back, yeah, John Morant, the most important player, he will not be on the back-to-back -back if he ends up playing here in this spot. He'll just be ready to rock and go in this one. But I like betting Clippers as soon as this thing drops up to eight, assuming minus 110, like immediately. And I do expect it to kind of open in that range. Pretty identical to what you saw today opening up against Denver. Now, Denver, they're a higher-ranked team in adjusted net rating in my model, in Dunks and Threes models. It is what it is. And the Clippers, they're continuing to climb here. They're 18 and 12, plus 2.5. But I gotta say, this current iteration, I know Jamal Murray and Jokic, that two-man rapport that they have, so solid, so ridiculous, and then... They have the KCP shooting surrounding it. They put Julian Strother out there from time to time. Peyton Watson into that starting unit. I think anything up to eight here, just half a point short of where it ended up closing there against Denver. I'm willing to bet that instantly as soon as the line drops. So I'm putting this on you, friends, because I think this should be closer to double digits. I made this the first ever lean lock. Los Angeles Clippers up to minus eight with Ja. Again, I'm assuming Ja. You're not going to be getting this number at minus eight if there is no Ja. It's just what it is. It's going to be inflated. I want Ja to play so that it brings the number down to a bettable range. Again, I think it could open inside of the minus eight number. We'll see where the market decides to value this at. I'm kind of excited to fire it as soon as I see it, as long as it's better than that break-even number. So... Putting it a little bit on you to be able to find this. If you have any questions, as always, hit me up at Eric Lindquist. Happy to let you know what I end up doing in this spot. And that does it for another edition of Lindy's Leans, Likes, and Locks. You know what to do. Go to that comment section below. Let me know your favorite plays that exist here on the slate for Friday. 
Good to be back in the home base here once more. Again, airports, childhood bedrooms, they're fun. They're nifty. Holidays are always crazy, always manic. We were able to do all right. Uh, I ended up losing a little bit of money there over Christmas. That was a bummer. And then obviously just, you know, it is what it is. But I feel good about the reads. I feel good about the math. And I feel good about the Odd Chopper tools, all things that can help you make some money. So jump into that premium Discord, sign up down below. And hey, come hang out there in the Discord. The water is pretty damn warm. Thank you to producer Jacob. Stand up a little bit later here tonight, considering, uh, my God, there was a lot of news to handle here in the NBA streets. But until next week, and well, check out NFL Lindy's, of course. That'll be coming up here for Sunday. But until next week, friends, I'm Eric Lindquist. Best of luck in the NBA streets on Friday. <laughs>